Hello everyone, welcome back to the vlogs. Please excuse the way I look today. I am feeling terrible. Refer to the last vlog if you wanna know why. However, today I am gonna show you my recipe for my vegan and gluten-free spaghetti squash mac and cheese. I've made it a couple times and put it on Instagram and everybody asked me for the recipe. So I'm gonna show you, it's really easy. Super simple, so let's get straight into the recipe. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna need, and then I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how to make it. Prep time, I would say, is about an hour and a half, hour, 15 minutes, only because you do have to cook the spaghetti squash for an hour in the oven, so keep that in mind. If you wanna make this, make sure you plan ahead, but when it's done and actually putting all the stuff together it doesn't take about 15 minutes or so. So this is everything you're gonna need here. I will say, depending on how many people you're trying to feed, just get a spaghetti squash We've got about a medium-sized one here, and it's just going to be feeding myself and Lad, so this will work perfectly. And then, disclaimer, the recipe calls for dairy-free milk. However, the dairy-free milk that I use is almond milk, and it's vanilla-flavored. That's not going to go well, so I am going to use regular dairy milk with this, but you can use whatever milk you like. We're going to need some Dijon mustard, a red onion, red bell pepper, broccoli florets, and then the recipe calls for coconut flour, but I like almond flour better, so we're going to use that. This is nutritional yeast seasoning. This is going to be our cheese substitute to make the mac and cheese part, and then it calls for soy sauce, but I'm going to be using liquid with aminos in place of that, and then just salt, pepper, and garlic, and that's all you need. Okay, so step one, please excuse how dirty my oven is. We're gonna turn this baby on 400 and let that preheat. So while the oven's preheating to 400 degrees, it's gonna take it a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and get out a baking sheet. Any baking sheet will do, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put aluminum foil on top of that. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and just chop up my red onion and red bell pepper. I just use this for sort of like a garnish in the mac and cheese, so add like however much or however little you like. If you like a different pepper, you could add that. A white onion instead of red onion, it's really whatever you want to pair with the broccoli to be sort of your toppings on the mac and cheese. We have chopped the vegetables, pepper and onion. The next step is going to be to bug your boyfriend and ask him if he can cut the spaghetti squash in half because it is really hard. However, he's doing something for work, so we're gonna attempt to do it ourselves. <laughs> but please be warned, it is so hard, so be careful. Proceed with caution. Okay, low-key, that was so hard. Please be careful doing that. The next step is gonna be to get a spoon and scoop all of the little nasty looking like seeds and stuff out of there. Like you used to do with a pumpkin, you know, when we were kids and like carved pumpkins and stuff. That's what you do. Right, next, you're gonna wanna take some olive oil and lay your spaghetti squash on your baking tray. Drizzle with olive oil. And then we're gonna add some salt and pepper, garlic if you want to. And then we're gonna turn the squash over like this. Go ahead and put it in the oven and bake for one hour. Okay. 
Okay, so while that's baking in the oven for one hour, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up the broccoli florets as much or as little as you want. I like to cut mine up really, really thin and it goes really nicely inside the pasta. Okay, so broccoli is chopped up. We've still got a whopping 52 minutes left on the oven, but when that gets down to probably around 12 to 15 minutes, I would say, because we are at 400, I will put the broccoli on a separate baking sheet and then pop those in the oven. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and make the sauce while the spaghetti squash is cooking. I'm still waiting to put the broccoli in the oven, so we're gonna whip this up really quick. I'm gonna use my Ninja blender for this. You can whisk all the stuff together if you don't have anything like this, but this just makes it super easy. So you're gonna need, the recipe calls for one and a half cups of milk, but pro tip, we found that it makes it really liquidy and we wanted to make it a little bit thicker. So I'm using exactly one cup of milk. And then next the recipe calls for four tablespoons of Dijon mustard. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna add, if you want to add hot sauce in here and make it a little bit spicy, you can, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't like anything spicy. So we're gonna go straight for the soy sauce and I've substituted that for liquid aminos. So it calls for two tablespoons of soy sauce. Next up, we are gonna add our almond flour. Like I said, the recipe calls for coconut flour. I don't like coconut flour, so we're gonna use almond flour. This is what thickens up the sauce. So it calls for two tablespoons. I might put a little bit more in there to make the sauce a little bit thicker. So let's start with like two heaping tablespoons. Next, this is the fun part. If you've never had nutritional yeast, do not let it intimidate you. It's it's not gross. This is what gives it the cheesy flavor. I know vegan cheese is actually really gross. So trust me on this, it's not that bad. So we're gonna add three fourths of a cup, which sounds like a lot and it kind of is, but like I said, it makes it really cheesy. Next, you're just gonna season the sauce however you like it. We like ours a little bit garlicky, so you can add more garlic pepper, salt, pepper. You could add, like I said, hot sauce, um, onion powder, whatever you want. So we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of seasoning in it, and then we're gonna blend. So now that we've blended it up, you can tell can, if you can see that it's kind of liquidy, like it tends to be pretty runny. So that's why I recommended using a little bit less milk and a little more flour, it helps thicken it up. But this actually looks really great. So I'm gonna leave this like this and just pop it in the fridge until we're done baking the squash. Now that the whole neighborhood has anxiety. Okay, now that we got those out of the oven, they are looking great. Don't be concerned if they're a little bit brown looking they look like they're burnt but they're not and we're not even going to use the outer shell of them anyway i'm going to let them cool and then we're going to flip them over and we'll get the actual noodles out and i'll show you how to do that i just got new sunglasses in the mail and now i feel like morgan adams
Maybe I should leave them on for the rest of the video. Maybe not. Anyway. Okay, now we do the interesting part and make the noodles. So I'm just gonna estimate using about one half of the spaghetti squash for each of us. So I've gone ahead and gotten out some bowls. These are some big wide bowls. I got these from Amazon and I actually really love them. But yeah, we're gonna take a fork and get the noodles out. I'll show you how to do it. So when you're done, it should look like this. Doesn't look that great yet, but trust the process, stay with me. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my, grab the sauce that we made that we stuck in the fridge. Go ahead and get that back out and just letting that be uh, getting back to room temperature because no one likes cold sauce on hot pasta. <music> The final step, all that's left to do is top it with our sauce that we made, plate it up real nice, and we're ready to eat. And there you have it. Yeah, it's not the prettiest presentation. I mean, it just kind of looks like noodles, but trust me, it's really good. And if you're a pasta lover, sorry if you can hear our laundry going in the background, it's kind of loud. But if you're a pasta lover like I am, this is a really, really good alternative. Even if you're like not even trying to do gluten-free or vegan or anything like that, sometimes you just get a craving for like a really big bowl of pasta with some veggies and stuff. So this is a great way to curb that craving. You're just eating a giant bowl of vegetables, which is awesome. So we're ready to eat. Oh, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Don't worry, I didn't get that on camera, so oh. it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> All right, the official taste test. We've had this before, and he likes it. Hell yeah. Go ahead, let me know what you think. <laughs> no, that's good. That's really good. Do you like it? Need some chicken. I asked if you wanted to put any protein in it. There's some. That's very oh, yeah. good. That's good. If he likes it, your picky boyfriend likes it, who eats like a five-year-old, you know it's good. His diet consists of Hot Pockets, Pop-Tarts, and Lunchables. There are no lies detected. Okay, well taste test is complete. Everything turned out really great. The sauce turned out much cheesy. thicker, yeah, cheesy and thicker than last time. So I recommend cutting the milk a little bit and adding more flour. I think that helped a lot, so. Add some hot sauce. Do you approve? You don't like hot sauce in it. Do you want hot sauce in it? She never asked me what I like. I don't like hot stuff. I do. Clearly. Give us some hot sauce. <laughs> Can we in now? Yeah, thank you, baby. It's good, I appreciate it. Is this all of it? Yes. All right, y'all, that is it. That's the recipe. Hope you liked it. Comment down below if you try it. Again, don't expect this to be like Velveeta or something. It's, it's not the same, but it's great. It's a great pasta alternative if you love mac and cheese. I don't know anybody that doesn't like mac and cheese. Hit that subscribe button. It takes two seconds. Oh yeah. Two. Hit it. He's my Hit biggest it. fan. If you haven't subscribed, you totally should. And if right. you have, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. But I've been wanting to do more recipes and more food nutritional things, little like hacks, I guess, that I've found that I've, since I've been doing like gl gluten-free, dairy-free and some stuff like that. So a lot of people asked about this recipe when I shared it on my Instagram. So here you go. Hope you liked it. Hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you try it. And let me know if you have any good recipes for me to try. And if I like them, 
I'll film them and share them. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys next time. Say bye. Peace.